All right, this is Steve Palladino from Palladino Power Project, and I'm bringing you another video uh, assessing some uh, testing. And essentially, this this is a, a common question, and it's a, a good good uh, topic to to discuss. Um, and that is, someone might go through testing, and in, in my plans, particularly the auto CP optimizing plans, the ones that optimize a, a multi-parameter power duration model, the question often arises, um, which, which FTP slash CP should I use? Should I use the, the one that auto CP generates or stride, stride auto CP, or should I insert the three testing data points at the beginning of the plan, and those are usually a 10-minute test, uh, a 10-second plus two-minute test, and then a 20-minute test. And what you would do is insert the 10, the two, and the 20-minute test into the super power calculator and use that model, which is a modified monod model, another power duration model. Um, and uh, get a figure for that. And, and a lot of times they are different. So this, this person, and I'm gonna use this as an example, but I, I hope you know, everyone will follow along because this does apply to making assessments of testing and uh, using both, both a multi-parameter power duration model as well as other models and other uh, data sets to arrive at a uh, FTP CP figure that's that's appropriate. Um, so uh, this athlete uh, did recently con uh, con uh, completed a week where they did a two minute test and did a 10 minute test and did a 20 minute test in one week. And the athlete goes on to say the stride power center, uh, the auto uh, CP calculates the athlete CP as 201 watts. In other words, that's the auto CP estimate, estimate underscore. Um, but then when the athlete put all three of their test result values into the super power calculator, they got an estimate of 207 watts, all right? So the, the question is, which CP should I use for upcoming training? Is it 201 or 207 um, or something in between? We'll come back to that. But first thing to understand is that the difference between 201 and 207 is only 3%. And in, in the training plan guide that I produce, uh, which has a lot of information that's worthwhile, even if you're not using my plans and you're just doing your own thing, um, there's this. You go to the testing section and I have this actually in bolded. Um, so uh, modeled, FTP CP estimates, that's from the multi-parameter uh, models, whether it's, it's Stride Auto CP or WKL or Golden Cheetah. But in this case, Stride Auto CP, uh, the modeled FTP CP estimates may be underreported versus a CP test estimate if you did a straight CP test or you did like this, you plugged your test into the super power, power calculator. Um, it may be underreported. Um, it's not unusual to see a CP test, uh, CP estimate up to up to up to about four percent higher than the auto CP estimate. When the stride power duration curve is lacking maximal efforts, whether it's a race or a time trial, in the twenty to forty minute do domain. So. I test up to 20 because it gives you a, a pretty darn good estimate. Um, but to really truly optimize the stride power duration curve, you should have a, a 
a test or race that's uh, ideally 30 or 40 minutes or even a 10K race uh, that's over 40 minutes. That will fully optimize it. But uh, having a two minute, a 10 minute, 20 minute test gets you pretty darn close. So what I'm trying to say here with this bolded and using uh, this, this case as an example is that you can, depending on the data that you're using and the model you're using, you can get estimates that vary a bit. In this case, 3% um, from 201 to 207. So let's uh, go into how I would uh, go about this. I would not simply rely on the auto CP or the multi-parameter model estimate of CP or FTP. And I would not solely reply, uh, rely on the three test results in the super power calculator. What I would also do is do uh, enter the two minute and 10 minute tests into the, um, the calculator, the two minute and 20 minute tests. So we're only putting two values in, two and 20 or two and 10, and a couple of other things that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Uh, but first, let's look at this person's testing. Okay, so you can see that this is their the stride power duration model. That's the white line. And this is the actual mean maximal power. And you can see that um, he established a mean maximal power that was um, that that uh, pushed the uh, model line. So you can see the model line is sitting right on top of that value. And you can see the same thing for 20 minutes. So the two minute, the 20 minute are really the primary supporters of this particular model at this at this point in time, the 10 minute test was relatively un, underperformed compared to the two minute and the 20 minute test. So the 10 minute sort of drags things down a little bit, drags it down just a little bit. So what I do or what I did is I come over to final surge and um, in the beta mode of your calendar, in the far right-hand column, there's a little calculator icon. You're not seeing me click on this because I constrained the screen, but you, there's an icon in the far right column, a right, far right edge on the beta calendar in Final Surge. There's a calculator icon. Click it, and it'll come up with a bunch of different calculators if you click on mine, then uh, you will have uh, some various calculators at your command. So the first one is entering CP test uh, data uh, or the using two of the test results at a time. So here I'm going to use the two minute, uh, which was uh, 277 watts and the 10 minute, um, <clears throat> which was 217 watts. And what do I get? I scroll down and I see that it estimates it at 202 watts. Why is that? Why it's still within that 201 to 207, but this one's 202. Remember, the 10-minute test was the um, the was a little bit underperformed compared to the two and the 20. So now let's put the 20-minute test in instead. That was 20 minutes at 214 watts. We're going to re-estimate the CP, and it comes out with 207 with 8.4 uh, kilojoules for reserve work capacity, but it comes up with 207, which matches the super power calculator. And essentially what that's saying is the two minute and the 20 minute predominate are, are the key uh, 
uh, values here. So again, we haven't found anything that pushes us outside of that 201 to 207 watt CP estimate range. Now, there's two other things that I do when I'm evaluating these several tests. I also have a calculator here. If you scroll all the way down on my calculators, there's CP calculator, and there's also calculate CP from a racer time trial that's less than or equal to 40 minutes. So, hey, guess what? We have a 10 minute time trial because that was the test and that was 217 watts. Put that estimate. And for a male uh, wind pod user, it, it suggests that the, the uh, CP FTP estimate range is somewhere between 197 to 204. Again, remember, this was the weaker of the three tests. So I always do that. I'll do the I'll do all three of them, the two, the 10, the 20, and I'll do the two and the 10 in the CP calculator, the two and the 20 in the CP calculator, the 10 minute alone, and the 20 minute alone. So we haven't done that one yet. Um, 20 minutes was 214 watts, and there we go. And uh, again, for this one, male wind pod user, 204 to 208. All right. So essentially, what this, what these various tests, they're sort of confirmed that 201 to 207, somewhere within that 3% range. All right. So, which one do you use? We'll come back to here. And the athlete goes, um, which, one, um, which one do I use? 201, 207, something in between. Well, one of the things that, that uh, I ascribe to, and Dr. Coggin had, had recommended this many years ago, is that, you know, why, why be too concerned about this really fine precision, round it off to the near, nearest five watts and be and, and play on. So for this athlete, um, I would say I would be very comfortable at, at 207 because the, the 20 minute test in particular and the two plus the 20 minute test are suggesting this and that's the most important to me. Anything with the 10 minute test is dragging it down and that that's to me is not a real CP estimate. So I would be okay with this, this athlete going 207, but could easily go, okay, let's just set it at 205 for training purposes going forward and play on. And that's what I'm gonna to suggest to this athlete. So here we have uh, a, uh, a good example of how to use the test data from the 10 minute, the two minute and the 20 minute test and decipher which is the best. Are you gonna use the auto CP result? Are you gonna use the super power calculator using all three? Or do you use decipher using those other methods I just discussed to sort of triangulate to what might be best? Uh, so um, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully this helps. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.